Thanks for checking out the video today, everyone. This is going to be a really quick video where I just run through what I think is the most important thing to understand about Lumion's lighting. And I don't just mean that as a general uh, concept of lighting. I mean the actual light bulbs or the light nodes that you drop in Lumion. I'm going to get into why I think that there's kind of a problem with them outside of like just kind of taking them right out of the box and using them. It's they are, in my opinion, set up for exterior. I don't understand why the values are as high as they are, which is the issue that you're going to run into. And if you just drop them in, you will not be able to create the lighting that you're, you're kind of looking for because 300 is just a ridiculous value. So in this particular scene, this may not be the best example, but I'm going to use it just because in this scene, I think the Lumion devs were only using it as lighting it up from kind of a distance, which, you know, this this obviously doesn't completely apply to that because what I'm focusing on is actually rendering the interior while you're inside of the building. And this is something I feel like Lumion does actually struggle quite a bit with just because the lighting is kind of set up to work really well with exteriors. It does work quite well in that respect, but a lot of the things that make it great for exteriors actually hurt it quite a bit for interiors. So let me just set up a quick camera angle here. So here I'll drop in night and you can see how strong the lights are here. It just does not look right. So what's the problem? The problem is that there's a bunch of these kind of random lights all over the place. So let's remove this here. So this an Omni light of 7,500 is just ridiculously high. So we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that one there. And another thing that th again, this was probably just used for lighting up kind of from the exterior. I do not like using area lights in Lumion. I, I try and avoid avoid them as much as possible because lights that don't cast shadows, like with the Omni lights and stuff like that, you might be or the old Omni lights, sorry, you might be able to make it work. But I find that it's such a it's a razor thin margin between just getting that extra lighting of what you want and just making something look fake. If you're lighting up a certain area and it's not casting shadows, it's very easy for even someone who's not trained in ArchFizz to look at that and go, something's not right here because it goes against basically everything that we're taught in the real world. So even if the there may not be perfect shadows from you know the Omni lights or the spotlights, it's a lot better than the area lights, so I don't use them. And this is another one here. So actually, no, that one's only at 17. So that one would probably be a better value, but I'm not going to use that one. And this is kind of a good example of what I mean. So by default, Lumion drops in a spotlight that is 300. But the lamp that the Lumion devs put in this example, they only set it to a value of three. So that kind of shows you that for a lamp that's sitting right here to get some light that looks fairly natural, you're only going to use a value of three. The default is 300. So I, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know why it's, it's kind of done like that. I, I think that it should be kind of set up in a way that there's interior and exterior so that people, even if it's just changing the values, I think that people would have a much easier time with that. What I'm going to do for these spotlights as well is I'm just going to get rid of them all together and let's check out what the fire is here. So this one is also too high. Uh, maybe I'll just crank this one down for now. Um, cause that could be helpful to use. I'm going to drag this to the back here. I'm going to hold X just to lock it to that axis. And I'm just going to position it like here, duplicate it out with Alt, hold Z to duplicate it over. And this is, these are both set to 400. So let's take this down to like 10 for now, or maybe eight. And I'll show you why, because this is not, I've tested this out and this one is not quite high enough. I'm going to show you why, because it is really important to understand this. But without an example, it's kind of hard to explain. I'll duplicate this over. Holding X, I'll go four meters. Duplicate again. And this one, I'm just going to stop here in front of the fireplace. But then this one will just drag out one and a half more. And I'm going to drag this over to the middle just because I do need it to be shining right on these cabinets. Okay. 
Yeah, and those don't have to be perfect. So let's take a quick look at the lighting in our photo now. So that's a pretty big difference. You can actually see in the thumbnail, maybe I should have rendered this out, but this is what our lights look like right now. And this is what it looks like when they were cranked all the way up. But you can still see that there's actually quite a problem here. So why are we getting this arc here? It's because the light that is right up here, it's it's actually at such a low value of eight that the sphere is basically the sphere of influence of the light is not able to reach down to the floor. So it doesn't matter if there's something there. It's it's just not able to cast the shadows that we want. And something I am actually going to do right here is I'm going to get rid of the sun effect. Real skies. I forgot to do this. Let's go night. Turn the brightness down. I'm just going to turn that right off, actually. So this is a much better demonstration of how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these. Now I'm going to go up to maybe we'll go 12 or 13. Now that's it's not quite gone. You can still see in the corner how that sphere is kind of messing everything up. But if we take it a little bit further, grab these and we actually just go up to about 17. Now the lighting actually doesn't look that much different, but you can see that that kind of weird shadow, the edge of the shadow is gone. So that is how strong I think you should make your lights in Lumion. You really just want it so that it covers the object in that, that kind of the sphere. Now looking at this, we can start to play around with the effect. So 0.7 exposure is a little high. So let's go here and the color correction, you know, you can bring the brightness down or you bring it up a little bit, just depending on what looks best. I typically like to turn the contrast up a little bit. This this part is just a little bit of an extra bonus, I guess, uh, because I did kind of show you the, the light bulb trick, but I want to just quickly run through a little bit of the effects. What the limit load does is it brings everything, so it squishes everything that is not black kind of closer to the black end of the spectrum. So limit low at zero right now, it's not really affecting anything. You go all the way up, it's black. With the limit low, if you bring it all the way down, everything turns white. So it's basically just squishing everything down. The closest thing that this has in Photoshop is the curves. So you can get curves that are quite complex in Photoshop, but for Lumion, they're just trying to give you a little bit of extra options. So maybe you don't have to do the post-production, but honestly, I'd recommend that you do it in Photoshop anyways, because that is what Photoshop is made to do. And from here, we can also go back to real skies. We're going to turn the brightness up. And something a good, something that is good to keep in mind is that the brightness of the real skies, it, this will actually affect how much light is kind of coming into your scene. Whereas the overall brightness is more so just for the image texture, I believe. And uh, that may just help you kind of balance out the effect you're looking for with real skies. And yeah, this, this is an important one. Exposure I find with this because once you control the shadows, then you can kind of just tweak the exposure to get the look that you're going for. And already, you can see a massive difference in this scene. So I did adjust the effects a little bit, but you can see from this thumbnail down here how bright this is and how blown out it is compared to this one. So as I said, definitely not a perfect Lumion scene, but I think that it is looking much better. And the lighting does look a lot more realistic with the shadows and just how it spreads across the room by using maybe more spotlights as I did, but then decreasing the value just so that they kind of reach out to the, the correct uh, portion. So as a little example, let's take a look at this lamp right here. Let's turn the lights on the ceiling all the way down and then let's go into photo. So right now, this lamp only has a value of three and look at how strong that light is. So without the other lights kind of interfering with it, you can actually see that there is quite a bit of power to, to that lamp and that is 100 times smaller than what comes in by default. Let's throw in a, let's actually turn this up to 300 and see what it looks like. Close enough. So that is what it looks like at 300 by default. It, it doesn't make any sense. Like it's just, it's absurdly high. And while this may look a little bit brighter because there's no other spotlights in the scene, I think it does illustrate my point. So that's gonna be the end of the video. I do really hope that this tip helped people out. 
whenever people ask me kind of how do I improve my lighting in Lumion, this is always the number one thing that I tell them. It's just turn everything down, then start to play with the effects. When you have everything set to 300, even when you're cranking the exposure down and playing with the color correction brightness, it, the damage is kind of already done. Like you can't, in my opinion, you can't really fix it at that point because you've already blown out all the scenes and you might be able to, you know, suppress like the highlights in Photoshop or something like that, but it's just, it's not a good starting point. So that is how I would test it. If you're doing a typical interior unit with, you know, nine feet high ceilings, I would probably recommend you use about 20. You'll have to play around with it, but 20 is typically the value that we use because it's going to hit the floor and it's going to cast shadows, but it's not going to blow everything out. So if you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I do have some more small videos like this coming out, but then also some finished videos uh, in Lumion and hopefully D5 soon that uh, I'm going to be sharing with everyone. So I hope that you will join me and I hope to see you in the comments there. For now, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.